Uh, in this video tutorial, I will show you how you can create a catalog PDF file from Embroidery Designs. And for that, I will be using ARM Stitch Buddy Automate Directions, which are introduced with Stitch Buddy version 2.14. I'm Matthias. I'm the developer of Stitch Buddy, um, which is an application to edit machine embroidery designs on Macs or on iOS devices. And the automator action I will show you is part of Stitch Buddy for Mac OS. And I think most of you, or at least many of you, won't know Automator. Automator is a tool provided by Apple which allows you to run repetitive tasks um, automatically, as the name mentions. Um, so you don't have to trigger one step after the other manually, but you can create workflows which work. Uh, each step on this workflow, each action works on the result of the previous one. It's a very powerful tool. Only few people, I think, really know about it. And you can find it in the application folder of your Mac OS. And for the convenience of this demonstration, I already added it to my dock. This little robot here, it's Automator. And I start it and create a new document. So from Automator's perspective, a document could either be a workflow, that's what we will use in a minute, or you can create standalone applications. Or you can um, have a context item in, in fold for folders or files which you can use to run some action based on your selection. You can um, have a workflow assigned to a folder. So for every item which is moved to or copied to this folder, this action is performed. Um, in a second video tutorial, I will look a little bit into creating an application. Uh, but today, which is the first one for application uh, for automated action, I will stick with an easy workflow, which is more interactive. Then, so just use a workflow, and here you're seeing a library, uh, just maybe a little bit larger, of a library of all actions, all parts of an, an automated workflow, which are located on your Mac. Um, in automated action, some of them came with macOS. Others are provided by applications. For example, you will see some from Pixelmator here on my Mac, for example. Um, and Stitch Buddy is another application now which come with three automated actions. And in this first example here, we'll, we will use one of them. Um, so the use case I'm trying to achieve here is I will create a PDF which comes with the one page for each design I selected. And on each of these pages, there will be a printout of this design mentioning the, the threads, thread colors, the information about the design, something like that. You could do that in the past as well. You could start Stitch Buddy, open every single design, print the file to a PDF, and then you will end up with a couple of PDF files and then you can, for example, use the preview application from macOS and combine these PDFs into a single one. Um, well, a lot of steps to perform manually, and I would like to create a workflow which does it automatically for me. So what I would like first is have an opportunity to select files, which should be part of this catalog. So I need an action regarding files and folders, and I want Automator to ask me for find items here. And it should say select designs. And it will present me in a dialog box with a folder where I can start navigating. And I already prepared something on my desktop, so I would use this folder, which is, if I mentioned it's on the desktop, it's a flowers folder. I already saw it at the beginning of this video. So uh, I should be, should be able to select files, but not only one, but multiple files. Okay, that's the first step. 
with these embroidery designs I selected, I would like to create PDFs. And therefore, the stitch body action exists. So in the folder here for PDFs, you can search for actions as well based on their name, for example. But as I know where it is, this is, this is the folder action from Stitch Buddy. Uh, it has a information behind what files it accepted, what the output is, something like that. I will just drag this action after the first one. And you see that these two actions are now connected, which means the first one is asking for files and passes them on to the next action, which is Stitch Buddy's one. It will create a PDF from the embroidery designs, one PDF for each of them. And they should be saved, well, maybe not on my desktop, but in another folder, which I already prepared. And yes, I would like to replace existing files. And I, and these options you might know from the print dialog in Stitch Buddy. I don't want to um, save templates. Um, which is good if you would like to place a design on a, on a fabric. But for this catalog, I would like it to include design details, how the size of the design, the number of a thread, something like that. I would like to have this thread list. This 3D effect is fine. So basically, that's okay. So after that, I have a couple of PDFs. And well, I think first, maybe we should just try out what we get. So the result of that uh, I'd like to show in preview. There's an action from Apple for that as well. Um, I think it's in the photos part here. Um, open images in preview. So and I will just run this three actions one after the other. It's called a workflow. So I can start the workflow by just clicking on the run button. Here I'm asked to select files. Just for example use the first ones here. Choose them. And here are three PDFs. Each of them with the design the thread, char, uh, thread list and some information about the embroidery design. That's exactly what you achieve if you would start Stitch Buddy manually and print every design into a PDF file, which is an option in the print dialog. So that's, that's fine for the first step. Um, but I mentioned I'd like to create a catalog which should be a combination of all these PDFs. So there is an action for that as well. So I choose from PDFs here, new PDF from images. And I will drag it between the creation of PDFs from Stitch Buddy and the invocation of preview to show the result. Again, it's asked me for a safe destination, or I will use the same folder I prepared for the other output as well. So, output file name, well, it's something like an um, embroidery cutter block, something like that. Replace existing is fine. And I would like to have a uh, size to fit each page. I think that looks good. Again, I will try to see my workflow works. Taking some, some other examples here. My workflow runs. That takes some time. As I can see, here is a spinning indicator, but nevertheless, here is my PDF file. Now the page for each design. Well, looks good, but actually there's room for improvement because what you don't know is um, these PDF files created from Stitch Buddy 
they are factorialized. What does it mean? Um, it means that every stitch on each design is really an element in this PDF file, uh, which is really great if you need a high quality graphics. You can resize the, the PDF file and still the design will be perfectly sharp. On the other hand, with designs with thousands of stitch, stitches and each stitch is a gradient as well, these PDF files become pretty large. So you can reduce the size of these PDF files and of the combined catalog as well dramatically if you don't use these vectorized PDF files but use them with pixels so that a graphic in this file is by, um, represented by color dots and they can be compressed much better. They tend to blur you know, on high um, zoom levels as you know from photos uh, but for, for a catalog file that's good enough, definitely good enough. And there's an action for that as well. Um, I think it's from Apple as, uh, as well and um, in the photo section you can change type of images. Or here I have two actions for that. The other one is from Pixelmator, but I will stick with Apple ones for the moment because every one of you will have this action. And so I'd like to change, after PD, Stitch Buddy has created PDFs, I would like to change these files to actually pixel PNGs. Um, this action might change the original file which I just created from Stitch Buddy. It's not changing the design, the embroidery design. We are now talking about the PDF. And this PDF for me is only a temporary item. So I don't care if the file type of this temporary item is changed or not. So I don't need an, an extra copy step in between. I mentioned I would like to use PNG. PNG is this gives a good quality with a very small file size, so I think it's a good compromise. So what happens now in our workflow? I will be asked for files, embroidery designs. Each embroidery design will be uh, will be output printed into a PDF file. Every PDF file will be turned into a PNG graphic. There will be a new PDF file created from all these graphics and this final PDF will be opened in preview. Um, maybe I'll, I'll uncheck this replace existing files and I'll run this action as well. Choosing the same flowers I did before. Here's my PDF again with three pages. On every page, the details of the flower. And now, if I look into the output folder I prepared on my desktop, you can also see the result between both catalog files. One catalog file with the vectorized PDFs was 45 megabyte while the one with based on PNGs is only a little bit about one megabyte. So it's really a huge compression you have here. Uh, at, at least actually exactly it's not a compression but it's a conversion. So I would really suggest changing the PDFs into PNG if you want to combine them. There are other people who might work on these PDFs in some other applications. Um, Adobe Illustrator or something like that. So they would like to have this vectorized graphics. Um, that's the reason why I didn't do it by default. So that was our workflow, switching back to Automator. I think it works pretty well. Uh, I would like to, change, uh, to save it. So a workflow can be saved like every file you have. Um, I will save it to my desktop again. Um, save it, um, create catalog. So I can use it again and again as often as I would like. I can 
um, process dozens of, uh, of embroidery designs, combine them into a catalog. Um, these workflows can also be used, as I mentioned in, at the beginning, in, in, in other um, contexts. I can use it as a standalone application, for example. This I will show you in another video tutorial where we will use the other two stitch body actions to automatically um, convert embroidery designs from one format into the other while keeping the thread colors. But and, and there are some enhanced options as well, where you can um, select options during a workflow uh, which should be asked to the user. Um, this I will cover in another video. For the first one, you just saw how to work with Automator generally, um, how to create PDF files from embroidery designs with a stitch body action, how to combine these designs or these PDFs into a catalog, and I think that's it for today. Um, the automated action is introduced with Stitch Buddy version 2.14, um, released well end of 2017. I think it will be December when I'm ready to launch the app. So if you have any questions, don't be shy to contact me and to please share your experiences and uh, your opinion about Stitch Buddy with others. Uh, thanks for today and um, have a great day.